thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Stay tuned till later in this video to find out how you can receive a $50 gift card to use on their site. All right, so I'm very aware it's been a little while. I was on vacation, then I had a whiskey shelf collapse. We won't even go into that. Maybe that'll be a different story for a different day. And you guys have really been getting after me for more whiskey and cigar content. So that's what we're talking about today, whiskey. One of my favorite activities, one of my favorite ways to relax, even better if you're doing it with a friend or loved one. This does not have to only be a video about your wife. If you got a friend you're trying to get into whiskey, a brother, a sister, anybody that's not currently a whiskey drinker that you would like to bring into the fold, bring into the brotherhood of whiskey heads. I'm gonna go over six whiskeys that I think are good representations of some different categories of whiskey, and I also think they're pretty good for beginners. They're a little bit more mellow, but they're all really good full flavored, but not overly aggressive. Most of them aren't terribly expensive. I tried to pick stuff that is generally available. Numero uno. One Aww, of my the fave. One of my favorite whiskeys. I recommend this more than just about any whiskey ever. Anytime somebody says, I'm getting into whiskey, what do you recommend? This whiskey comes up a ton, a ton. And that is my good old friend, Woodford Reserve Double O. Woodford Reserve is a brown Foreman product. You can usually get it for around $55 to $60 a bottle. It comes in at 90.4 proof. So for you guys that do not know about double barrel products, it's basically where once the whiskey is done maturing, they take the whiskey out of the original barrel it was in and then they stick it and finish it in a second barrel. There's different levels of char on that second barrel, but nevertheless, it is barreled a second time for a finish. I'm gonna try to be easy on the pours because we gotta get through six of these bad boys. Woodford always reminds me, I've always told people, it reminds me of breakfast. <laughs> Does it remind me of breakfast? No. <laughs> I smell, when I smell Woodford, I get a little bit of chocolate, but the predominant thing I get is like a maple brown sugar kind of flavor, which reminds me of pancakes. It's like a sweet, buttery maple syrup. Right, let me guess what you smell. Bourbon. <laughs> you don't get like a, a mapley kind of, what about vanilla? Yes. There's some vanilla. It's one that I think is gonna be agreeable to a lot of beginners. It's one of the reasons I, I put it on this list. It's not only one of my favorites, but at 90, what did I say it was? 90.4 proof. It's not gonna be, it's not gonna burn them up if they're fresh to drink and stuff neat. Switches it around like mouthwash. What's that face? <laughs> now I will say, this is our first whiskey of the night and the first one is always a little... Like, I feel like once I get going, get then going, I yeah. can have like more uh, like preference or whatever. How do you swish it around in your teeth? It's like oil pulling, <laughs> your whiskey pulling. What is oil pulling? You, you said that in the that? last video. What is oil pulling? I did. It's like when you, you put oil in your mouth, like olive oil or there's like different... Why would I put olive oil in my mouth? I think it's for like... So basically you're just talking shit. No, it's a, it's a thing. I'm going to look it up. We ain't got time for all that nonsense. We got whiskey to drink. Oh, we got six of these damn things. I think it's supposed to be like good for... I don't know. It's supposed to be good for you. You're supposed to like swish oil in your mouth? Like swish it up. Like swish it between your teeth. I couldn't deal with the texture of that. That would make me gag. Being that this is called double oaked, a lot of people think it's raw oaky. And to me, that's like a secondary or tertiary, like way in the back flavor. Do you at least somewhat like it or no? No. Hmm. I like it better probably than like Ardbeg. Hey. I don't think I like the Ardbeg. I, mean, I, I don't think I did. I didn't even put one of those on this list because I think uh, for most beginners, that's, that, that's, that's, a, good, that's, that's, a, that's an aggressive uh, assault on your taste buds. I think this is definitely a good starting point. It's sweet. It's not a crazy high proof. It's very approachable, very sippable. If you want to throw an ice cube in it for uh, somebody who's new to whiskey and maybe you know water it down a little bit so it's easier on their palate, I think it'll be really well. But yeah, it's go. definitely not hard to drink. No. Next, we got another bourbon, another one of my faves. Now this is a, a darling in the whiskey community. So you guys should be very familiar with this. Old Forester 1910. 
another brown Foreman product. Also gonna be about that $55 to $60 mark. This one does come in slightly higher proof at 93 proof. Also a double barreled product. Cool story about the old Forester 1910, 1910. Uh, Old Forester had an issue. They had a bunch of barrels dumped into a vat ready to, to bottle it up, and they had a fire in the factory. So the whiskey wouldn't ruin, they charred some new barrels, second barreled them, and that is kind of when they did their first kind of double barreled version. Now this is a much heavier char on the second barrel, if I'm remembering correctly, with 1910. But again, it's a, it's a double barreled product. I have two of these on the list because I just think for beginners they're great because I find that double barrel products are very sweet. That double barreling brings out a lot of the dark kind of brown Ooh, sugary sweet. that sweat. smells good. That smells like candy. It, it, it is. That smells really, that's like, it's like caramelly. Yeah, similar notes as I do in double oaked, but arranged differently. I get more chocolate in this than I do in the double oaked. And in this one, I also get a pipe tobacco. Mm. That's just delicious. That stuff is, now there's there's way more chocolate in this one, I think. I do, I, I like that better. Do you get darker fruits? Like a dark fruit, almost a raisiny kind of dark fruit, caramel? Caramel for sure. Toasted kind of marshmallow flavor? Yeah. You get where I'm coming from. You get a lot of these toasty, dark sugar. I also love 1920. It's a slightly higher proof and that's why I decided to put 1910 on the kind of getting someone into whiskey list because a little lower oh, proof, I think it's a little more better. palatable. Yeah. It's not too hot though, that's right? That's pretty easy, yeah. Make you want to smack your mama. And you didn't say, we did go to the Old Forester Distillery oh, yeah. in Kentucky when we were there. Right, I was on vacation. And, um, it was really neat. We couldn't do the tour because uh, we are not good at planning ahead and they were booked up, but we got to walk around the gift shop and see the, what is it called? The, the still. The still. Mm -hmm. Big old still. So moving over to the Irish category, I've said that I didn't really care for Irish whiskey. I don't like Jameson. I, um, Green spot, like it's okay. And everybody kept telling me red breast 12 and red be breast cast strength. I'm a big fan of breasts, so I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought for our Irish whiskey category, we have red breast 12. Red Breast 12 is from the Middleton Distillery. A little bit higher price point, about 75 to 80 in my area. Comes in at 80 proof. It is copper pot still whiskey, aged 12 years, triple distilled and aged in Oloroso sherry casks. So you should get a nice little bit of fruitiness out of this. Fruity bis? Fruity bis. You should get some fruity bis. <laughs> some fruity bits. Does Irish can... whiskey just taste different than like? Yeah, I mean, all the regions of whiskey bourbon. have their, yeah. Very whiskey? much so. All the different regions of whiskey ha different. have a very distinct kind of thing. You're supposed to smell it with your mouth open, right? You can, but then, you I know, saw, I saw, but I see some I people- I saw Jenna do that. Well, but I see some people do like- No, she uh, just kind of like yeah. parts her lips a little bit. Well, yeah, because you wanted to kind of like breathe in your mouth and yeah, your nose Yeah, then it at like the kind of goes in your mouth. <laughs> what she said. <laughs> You just, you, you want there to be a good yeah. flow across your, your olfactory. And if you just, you're kind of trapping it up in there. You want it to yeah. kind of flow across. I think this stuff smells great. I get a lot of, I get a lot of dark fruit out of this. Graham crackers. I don't know how you people do. You don't get like graham crackers? You don't taste like a weediness, like a, like a honey weediness. Like Honey Nut Cheerios. Right, that would be another way to describe it. Some people might describe that as graham crackers. Some people might describe that as Honey Nut Cheerios. You smell it though. So I'll be one of those weirdos that's like, smells like Honey Nut Cheerios. Yeah, man. I mean, hey, whatever you smell. I'm getting some fruitiness in there, whether it's some berries or some, but I think that's that sugar. Yeah, there's, I can get like a berry. I think that's the sherry cask influence, right? Because sherry cask stuff always has a bit of a, a fruity note. Okay. Why do you have to swish it between your teeth though? I like to fully coat. I really like that. That is probably the easiest drinking whiskey that, on, yeah. on the list. Now, a lot of people might say that the cask strength is better, and I do have the cask strength also. Also? <laughs> I do have the cask strength also. I do have the cask. I cannot speak. I do have the cask strength also. This doesn't need water. It doesn't need ice. It doesn't no. need anything. It's just super. This way, it doesn't have any like burn. No. It goes down like water. I don't know. The only thing that I'm getting on the palate that I didn't get on the nose is I do get a little bit of oak on the finish. I get a little wood. Really? 
nothing. So what do you think? This is the easiest. Easiest drinking. I would say, yeah. So if, if you were trying to introduce somebody to drinking whiskey neat for the first time. This one. Right. Yeah. I mean, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Yeah. No, this has like zero burn. Right. Yeah. If you can't palate this, if this is too hot, you're going to you're gonna struggle real hard with whiskey. Because yeah. this yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty. Yeah. That's as mellow as she pretty comes. pretty light. Moving over to Scotland. I'm probably going to piss people off with how I pronounce this. I've heard Balvaney, I think. Balvaney and Balvaney. Balvaney. For the first scotch entry, we're gonna go with Balvaney Caribbean Cask 14. Again, we're up in that $70 to $80 price range. This one is 86 proof. It is aged 14 years and finished in rum cask. Mm. It is 100% malted barley. Now, the reason I picked the Caribbean cask, I also have their, the Doublewood 15, I think it is up there. You can taste the rum influence. That's one of the reasons why I say I think it's good for newbies because it, it gives a lot of that rum kind of dark sugary. I almost smell banana. Yeah. Yeah on the nose, I get like this, I mean, you could smell the rum. Yeah. Caramelly, yeah. tropical, like- I get all that. Tropical banana kind of vibe. Yeah. I mean, you just can't be mad at that. Give me an umbrella and a beach. Right, I mean, I think anybody, and especially being that it's summer, I think this is, this smells summery to me. Yeah. Like I think somebody hands you this, and you're like, well, that just smells like a, that smells like a good time. I don't really taste banana, but it has a tropical vibe to it that I can't put my finger on the note, but I can taste the rum, which maybe it's just in my head, I think of tropical when I think of rum. I'm trying to put my finger on like what I taste. It's not banana, it's, but there's banana in the nose for sure. Little, little like butterscotchy Werther's original kind of situation. Is that coconut? I kept wanting to say coconut and I was like, am I just making that up because it, of like, I like coconut rum and like pina colada well, and, and, that's the and thing. like all of the tropical things. I get a little bit of the oak on the back. I don't know. About, I don't know how to taste oak. Just like a slightly. I've never tasted wood. That's what she said. <laughs> I beg to differ. <laughs> you knew that was coming. You can't say that around me. What do you think about that one? I like it. Like it? Yeah. It would be interesting, I think, to go back. Obviously, we don't have time for it no. in this video, but- Yeah, four hour video. To go back to the Woodford at the end yeah. and see what I think about it because the first, because I don't really drink bourbon. So the first one is always a little bit like rough. Well, and that's another thing If it is in a minute, we're gonna do a barrel proof. If you are getting somebody into whiskey and you're gonna give them a barrel proof, warm them up with a few non-barrel proof whiskeys first. Even me with as much barrel proof whiskeys I drink, if I start my night off with a barrel proof, it's a little much the first few sips. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. you know, it takes a second. Where if once you get a few in you. Oh, no, 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 not that, just come on. <laughs> um, then it, you know, it start, everything starts smoothing out a lot. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, no, I like that. Next, we're going a little heavy. Oh man. And as you might've seen at the intro card, this video is sponsored by Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. If you're not familiar with Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, I've done several videos on them. I'll link the video up here to kind of, you can go to if you really wanna see what they're all about. It's basically a club, you join, you pay yearly dues, and you have access to all these really great special single barrel bottlings of scotch. They have a tasting panel that goes out, goes to all these distilleries in Scotland, and they find the most awesome, awesome barrels, and they bottle them up special for the members of the club. And you get some really delicious stuff out of these people. I'm a big fan of what they're doing. I love them to death. I'm super happy they wanted to sponsor this video. Uh, it shows what cool guys they are too, because they wanted to sponsor a video that they were perfectly cool with us talking about a bunch of other, yeah. a bunch of other whiskeys. They're in this for the love of the game. These guys are straight yeah. whiskey heads. They love whiskey. I'll put, uh, some details down below. There's a box where you put like uh, special comments or gift message or, or something, something like that. You put my name in there and they'll email you a $50 gift card. So you can then use that toward the site to get a bottle or whatever. They've got some really cool options with the memberships. You can either do a year membership or they have membership and bottle bundles. If you are trying to explore whiskey, it is a great way to explore scotch because they're always 
got different bottles from different regions, awesome single barrel expressions of stuff. Um, yeah. It's really fun. And they have like a concierge service where you could call and like talk to their people and they can recommend a scotch for you and all this stuff. So definitely wanted to say a big thank you to those guys. And also we included one of their bottles in here. For the next scotch, we've got the Dark Lure. Which, by the way, another cool thing about Scotch Malt Whiskey. This is whiskey. the one you said you thought I would really like. I do. I got this one in, and they sent me a few for this video for me to pick from. And this is the one I picked just because I thought this seemed good. Um, I don't think this one's currently on the website. I think this one might be sold out. If it is, I apologize. But if you look up the Dark Lure, it'll usually have suggestions down below of like other bottles like this. The Dark Lure from Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Eight point three percent alcohol by volume, which equates to about 116 proof. It is a Speyside. It is a first fill ex bourbon. It has been aged for 16 years. And this one is around about $150 a bottle or so. It says notes of spearmint and almond oil were followed by a velvety sweet palate. Reduction released nuances of juicy oranges, toasted coconut, chocolate chip cookies. Their flavor notes and their names are fantastic. The Dark Lure. So substantially stronger. This is you're getting into single barrel, barrel strength versions of scotch. That's it. I mean. I think it's also interesting when you're showing a beginner, and again, do not start with this, <laughs> but I think it's interesting to show them whiskey along the different strengths, right? Something that's at a minimum of 80 proof, something in the 90s, something at barrel strength. So you can see, because usually when you get up to barrel strength, yes, it's a lot hotter and, and stronger, but the, the concentration of flavors is usually intense. That's super fruity. It smells really good. It does, it's fruity. I can smell the citrus in it. It's, yeah, I get citrus. I, I do get a little spearmint in there. There's a little bit of a minted, minty kind yeah. of situation. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You, <laughs> can, you can tell that's cast strength, baby. <laughs> you can tell more than one reason just the viscosity of it. And it's like <laughs> the, the like spearmint. Right. Right? It kind of reminds me of a rye in a little bit because I get like a spearmint citrusy kind of vibe, which I get a lot of times with rye whiskeys. Just the viscosity of it's different. It's like oily. Yeah, that was the first thing I could tell. It's, it's like, like thicker. Thicker and oilier, kind of like really clings to your mouth. Leaves a nice little sweetness on the palate after you finish. I think it's delicious. I, I like it. She's a scotch girl. I'm telling you, I think she's a scotch girl. I think she tends- I don't know, see that's But the you thing. like the Irish. Maybe you just like shit from across the pond. Maybe. Which is kind of hurting my feelings. So I'm a, a native Kentucky guy. I don't know. That's why I said maybe it would be, I would, when we're done filming, we'll, I'll, I'll go back to the Woodford and see. And see if you feel different. Yeah. Different there's a lot more range in scotch than there is in bourbons, right? I mean, don't get me wrong. There's, there's range in bourbon. But I mean, scotch, you got all the way from like a super fruity, friendly, nice space side, all the way to like mermaid's Bath water, seagull's armpit. Yeah, I don't like the I don't like Ardbeck, the peaty stuff. Right, the super peat. I love peat, but a lot of scotches are super friendly. I'm trying to be like Jenna. Just, trying to just keep trying to be like Jenna. Jenna's our girl. She's uh, our our girl like at her. Scotch Malt. Uh, <laughs> I actually did a live stream with her. Not uh, we did a on Monday. Monday we did yeah. the mid month out turn for those guys. I love her. She's a very sweet lady, and she knows her shit when it comes yeah. to whiskey. Let me tell you, and she yeah. loves the Islas. She loves the the briny, salty, peaty scotches, which. You know, I want to hang out with her. Those are my people. And she's got tattoos and sometimes blue hair. And Boston Terrier. <laughs> no wonder we like her. We got another one still. I am just going to love it. Well. Just like that. You can see this is a newbie. You don't always necessarily need to steer away from barrel proof stuff. You know, they've had a few. You've gotten them warmed up a little bit. You know, throw them a nice cast strength. This one's nice and sweet. I think it's super easy drinking. Now last, but certainly not least, and the reason that's you, that's you're probably going to think this is a little weird. You're like, Jeremy, why didn't you do this when you did the, the bourbons and the other stuff? When I first made up this list, I wasn't going to include one of these. And then after I put it all together, I thought, you know what? I can't do a full range of all the different regions and not include a rye. The difference between a rye and a bourbon, uh, and most of you whiskey guys know this, is the mash bill, right? So with rye whiskeys, the mash bill has more rye in the mash bill. For the rye entry, we are doing Michter's Kentucky Straight Rye. Michter's, 
uh, is very affordable at about 40 to $45 a bottle in my area. Comes in at a nice and easy drinking, 84.8 proof. It is a single barrel version. This, in my opinion, is a bourbon lover's rye. So if you're trying to introduce somebody to rye whiskey, this is a pretty easy entry into it. I think it's a must be a low rye mash bill because it's a very bourbony. It, yeah, I was gonna say it doesn't really smell any any but different than the bourbon. With rye, you normally get I get like a juicy fruit gum or a spearmint, uh, a, like a minty flavor. I don't get mint at all. You don't get any mint. Is your sniffer broke? <laughs> Maybe. Do you smell juicy fruit? Yes. I was gonna say it smells. I do. I do smell, now that you say that, you I smell really juicy, do smell fruit. juicy fruit. It's so weird. How do you notice that it's juicy fruit gum? See, I just I'm not good with like identifying. You will. Now that you smell it, it smells dead ass like, like juicy fruit gum. He, he's good at that. Like when I when I cook something and there's something in it that he's not used to or something, he's like, "What the f did you put in that?" <laughs> Because he can pick it out. His palate is is better than mine. What it is, I sit up here like a pompous ass <laughs> and drink whiskey and smoke cigars and try to pull out the chocolate note in a f***ing <laughs> cigar. And you train your palate over time. To, uh, I to really do smell juicy fruit. Smell, That's so funny. It smells just like... Are you, are you brainwashing me? Yeah. You smell juicy you smell fruit. Juicy fruit. <laughs> Do you smell juicy fruit? Juicy fruit. Juicy fruit. Juicy fruit. Listen to my Listen voice. To my you voice. smell juicy fruit. It does. It smells like it juicy fruit. It really does, but I don't get I don't get mint at all. Uh, the longer this sits, if you let it open up a little bit, I get a lot of like caramel and brown sugars and stuff like that. And this is why oh, I said sweet. some people are gonna be like, why'd you put the rye here? Because coming off of a barrel proof scotch. Compared to that, it's like this shit <laughs> is like water. This shit like is that. like drinking cotton candy, right? Yeah. Like it's super sweet and super easy. Because some ryes are like hundred percent rye and they're super spicy. Like they've got a lot of like spice. This one has got a little bit. You can tell it's a yeah. you can tell it's a rye, but Pikesville is another really good rye that I like a lot. I pretty much like everything Michter's puts in a bottle. Even though I'm a little bit mad at Michter's because we went there, the distillery was closed. We couldn't get in to go we check. We walked them. a mile in the summer heat. I walked a mile in the summer heat. A little. <laughs> it more. wasn't a mile. It was like half a mile. But so that was a nice little tour day. Different types of whiskey and some of the whiskeys I would recommend giving to somebody that's kind of fresh into whiskey. How to get your wife drunk on a Friday night. Get a friend that isn't currently into it, into whiskey. It's a good bonding experience. Sit around. It drink. really is interesting. <laughs> whiskey make your mouth go weird. It is interesting to learn about the different kinds. To me, it, it's whiskey. It's, yeah. Right. But it's all the same. It's not all though. But it's, yeah, it's they're, definitely not. They're, oh, they're, and if I'd have given you a, a Isla on the backside of all these, you would have seen how different it can get. Oh, I know about the <laughs> Isla. So that's it for us today, guys. We just wanted to kind of hang out with you for a little while, try some whiskeys, maybe give you some good ideas for if you wanted to get your wife or significant other, friend, family member into whiskey. Once again, before we go, another big thank you to the guys at Scotch Malt Whiskey for uh, sponsoring this video, providing us with that awesome bottle, the Dark Lure, wasn't it? The, the Dark Lure. The Dark Lure. Yes, the dark lower. Whether you're a newbie just getting into it, or whether you're a straight up whiskey nerd like myself and you want to explore scotch a little further, it's a great, great way to do that. So it's a cool deal. It's a cool thing for like a gift too. If you have someone you want to, you know, gift them a membership and then they can. 100%. It's a, it's, it's a cool thing and they're cool people over there. So definitely go check those guys out. And uh, like I said, there's a nice little 50, free $50 gift certificate in it for you. So definitely go down there and do the thing. Do the damn thing. We're gonna finish up. I think she wants to go back to drinking some more bourbon. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see where tonight leads. I'm gonna drink more. This wasn't. That what you are, I think you are a whiskey girl. Or a no, scotch girl. Scotch. I think you're a scotch girl. Yeah, I like the scotch more than the whiskey, I think. I mean, it kind of hurts my feelings a little bit. Like I said, being a native Kentuckian, but I'll let it go. I'll let it go. Scotch is good stuff. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's it. Appreciate you guys hanging out with us for a little while today. If you did enjoy this, feel free to smash that like button. That always helps us out. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so. We'd love to have you on board. I hope everyone is having a fantastic week. <laughs> we'll see you in the next oh, video. Ah, nailed it. There it is. I was wondering. <laughs> I was thinking, is she going to do it or is she going to leave me hanging? Whiskey, whiskey, whiskey. Caressing your breasts. Oh, get it. Your red breasts. Oh, <laughs> breath. My red breasts. Watch out, you're gonna hit my mic. A lot of people drunk, drunk, drunk. <laughs> Would you quit I'm fiddle with it? I'm with it. She is, because she's fiddle I'm trying with to make it. my shirt not rub against the microphone. You're, you got me paranoid. You're fiddle with it.